<laughs> hey everyone, how's everybody doing? Hey everybody. Hi everyone. My dog is also in this right now. <laughs> Your dog is coming down. She needs to cool it. <laughs> y'all already know. Y'all already know how we're gonna get down today. We're not gonna get started unless you are tagging. You are sharing this live. You are tagging your friends, your sisters, and your brothers, and your mamas and your daddies and your partners and your best friends. And you're sharing us because we all like to be shared. You know how we like to be shared. So share us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what is what is next week? Is it the fifteenth already? Oh wow! October fifteenth. No, this year has shot by. Mm-hmm. Has it? <laughs> Feels long. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. I don't know. I feel like I kind of feel like both. I feel like it's been a long year because of the circumstances that we've been in. But I feel like I ain't really did nothing this year. I don't know. It's just yeah. yeah I feel like it's maybe I'm shot by. Cause so, we've been at home for like what four to six months. Yes. Mm-hmm. We have. Wow. So we're gonna go ahead and actually get started with the advertisements. I want to thank you guys for joining and sharing. Thank you for coming on with us and talking with us. Hey, Regina, how you doing? Hey, um, Regina. Hey, Regina. So, um, we got uh, some games that we're going to play with you guys today. So, we, we need you guys to be as interactive as possible. And I'm going to, as we um, talk and as we um, communicate throughout the live, uh, I'm going to just remind you guys of that because um, some things we're going to be just talking about in discussion for, and for us. And then when we kind of randomly decide to pop out a question we want you guys to kind of be interactive in the chat and, and answer true or false or something like that um it, uh, if all platforms are able to participate i'm able to see all answers so if you're on youtube um if you're on twitter um if you're watching um on facebook of course we, we will be able to see that and share our answers so hopefully you, you hopefully you'll you participate um i want to give a shout out to crew um our sister organization who handles our substance use and mental health um, program. Um, our dear representative, Sean, is not here today. He, he was actually off, um, but I still wanted to let you know that that resource is still out there and they're still with us. Um, so if you or know some, or if you yourself or you know somebody that is um, using um, in or suffering from mental health, um, they can contact crew or contact Rashawn and here's his contact information. Um, he's not here to introduce himself, um, and you can um, definitely, definitely be um, referred to that resource. Okay, offset to that. Mm -hmm. I want to let y'all know that I am finished with my study as of today. Um, after yeah. that, yeah. I have one more um, interview to do. Um, so that's the person that's getting this last little bit of money that you guys <laughs> didn't want <laughs> no i'm just playing but um i do thank you guys for people that did reach out and didn't want to be a part of it um thank you guys for reaching out um thank you guys for helping us finish that study um and it don't stop here so now we just we just we're just collecting data um we're just analyzing that data da data so that we can start implementation um and that looks like us coming up with plans based on what you guys have told us to engage the, the black msm community in prep so thank you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for answering that call to action because that's exactly what it was, a call to action. <laughs> um, also, shout out to Project Uplift. Uplift, um, Uplift <laughs> is a um, organization that, I'm sorry, it's an organization that um, assists the LGBT community in case management, intense case management. Um, you know, here at Rain, we offer case management for people living with HIV and people who are interested in getting on prep. Um, those are the two qualifications to be case managed through brain. If that does not interest you, um, you're not interested in prep and you're not positive and or you need more case management and, and you are positive, you still are able to kind of go to Uplift, Project Uplift as well and receive additional assistance and help. So please, 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 that is a very, very useful resource. You guys can definitely use it and be a part of that. And I'm finished with mine. I want to introduce these beautiful young men that I got here on the live with me. Bryce, you can go far. Hey, everybody. My name is Bryce. I'm the parenting specialist at Rain. So what I do is that I work with clients who've been out of care, who are positive for, um, for six months or longer, or if you're newly diagnosed, I help you get into care realistically into two to three weeks. 
I case manage you. My job is to teach you how to um, navigate your health care and how to independently live your best life. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Hi, everyone. You might hear my dog again in a minute, but um, I am Jesse Elkins. My pronouns are he or they. Um, and I am the research coordinator at Rain. Unlike Johnny, we're kind of on the other side of the studies. So we're launching and in the kind of new beginning phase of four different studies, soon to be five, um, three for folks living with HIV, amazing interventions, app use, web-based um, apps to help you kind of navigate different areas of HIV, um, and then two studies for folks on PrEP. Um, they are all paid studies and they pay handsomely. So um, reach out if you're interested. Um, the first step is to screen to see if you're eligible. Step two is to enroll, take a survey, get paid. You know, it's a lot of fun. We're all fun. Thank you. And honestly and truly, his is a lot more easier to qualify for. So if you <laughs> are interested, um, you can call him and or you can just um, um, actually click on the link. And next time, we're going to make sure we have that link available to the people so that you guys can, um, if you're watching and, you, and you're interested right now, mm-hmm. you're able to kind of get that done right now while you're watching. Okay. For sure. so far, you, can far Rain, right you can go to the RAIN website and under research tab, um, it'll show you the four active studies and then the one upcoming study as well. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So make sure you go to www.carolinarain.org. Um, if you don't know our website, you can go to our page, um, our Keeping It 100 page or our Facebook page for RAIN. And you'll be able to kind of get that website and you can kind of go and look make sure, look at those studies and see if you qualify. All right. So Patrice will be joining us later. Um, but we're not going to wait. We're going to go ahead and actually just dive into the conversation today. Um, today's conversation, if you don't know, is going to be about HIV Mythbuster. <laughs> so um Historically, we know that there have been a lot of things that have been said about HIV um, that is just not true. Um, A lot of of our social networks have not caught up to science. A lot of history and traditions have not caught up to science. Mm -hmm. Um, And we want to break um, and dismantle some of those myths that people are holding on to um, today. Um, so feel free throughout the conversation to ask questions in the chat. We will be looking at those. Yes, um, And also we're going to be asking random questions throughout tonight's segment for you guys to participate and answer true or false. Um, and we will discuss the answer once, you know, once we kind of got a good amount. Um, again, um, all platforms are available to answer and participate. If you're watching on Twitter, YouTube, um, in- Insta, Facebook, all comment in, in your chat um, box and we'll be able to see it and get it and respond, okay? So, HIV, here we come. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into our first topic. Our first topic will be HIV versus AIDS. And what is the difference between living with HIV and then... Um, you can say, what's full-blown AIDS? <laughs> uh, full-blown AIDS. <laughs> For living with HIV to have a full blown AIDS, you know, because people love to use that term. I got full blown AIDS. So HIV mm-hmm. stands for a human um deficiency virus. It is a virus that attacks the body, um, its immune system, and it um keeps the immune system from working effectively and efficiently. AIDS is a condition of HIV. Basically, um HIV is AIDS is when the HIV has reached the third stage. Um, and it develops when the HIV has serious damage to the immune system. And it's a complex condition with symptoms that can vary from person to person. And um, it allows your body to not be able to fight off opportunistic infections. So I want to ask you two guys, um, how would you define HIV and AIDS in your own words? Um, Jesse, how would you define HIV in your own words? So when I've, when I've taught this and talked about it in the past, I think the biggest difference that helps people to remember it and to also reteach it, thus reducing stigma, is that HIV is a virus and AIDS is a syndrome. So AIDS is HIV progressed into a syndrome where opportunistic infections can take hold in your body. 
Mm-hmm. They're two completely different entities. <laughs> okay. Johnny, how would you define HIV? I actually I'm kinda upset that Jesse just gave that nice example because I don't know how to I don't I don't I don't know how to follow up with that. <laughs> uh but he did a very well job of explaining that. Um HIV is um the actual virus, like he said, and AIDS is um a stage of the virus that can progress. However, um I do wanna um say that typically um we don't like to use the word AIDS at all anyway, um, you know, only because it's just a clinical term. Um, so sure. historic. So we've been trying to kind of diminish that word altogether, the word AIDS, because it's honestly just a stage of HIV. And it's a it's a term um, that has something to do with numbers. Um, and so and what that looks like for people is that sometimes people say, oh, well, he has AIDS. But little do people know that a person can have AIDS today or whatever or be or have or have been diagnosed with AIDS today um and within the six three months or three months three to six months you know you know they can have overcome you know that state mm-hmm. and, 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 and are back to being just HIV positive um so it's just a clinical term I think that people don't really understand that portion of it yet um and so that's why we still hear that word that phrase full-blown AIDS right um, mm-hmm. yeah yeah, and I also think it's important for us to denounce that full-blown AIDS statement. Um, AIDS is AIDS. It doesn't get any worse than what it is. So when people categorize themselves as having full-blown AIDS, it's basically like they're giving themselves a death sentence. And I feel like us as um, workers in this field or even healthcare providers shouldn't be using that term because it, one, it brings the fear factor to the client. We don't want to scare the client. And two, it brings this factor of unable to come back. Like I have full blown AIDS. Like this is it. But that's right. not. That's yeah. not it. Right. Not go, go ahead. Oh, no, oh no, I was just gonna say, and honestly and truly, I say it's a clinical term. But a lot of times in the clinics, you know, we've all worked in. The, we all work. All three of us work close to close with clinics. We still we still don't hear that term either. You know, it's all a numbers game. So most most doctors and most physicians that you come into contact with, when they see that your numbers have reached a a, a certain point to where you know you're are considered to be having or di- diagnosed with AIDS, you mm-hmm. still want to hear from a doctor. They'll let you know that your numbers are under two hundred, and we'll, we'll go over that later on in the conversation. Um, and it'll tell tell you about what you need to do to you know moving forward. So even still, we say it's a clinical term, and it, and, it, and, it, and it's just what it is. But honestly, most doctors and stuff like that stay away from that word as well. So why do you two think still on this question topic? Mm-hmm. Why do you two think that people have held on to saying AIDS instead of HIV, which is usually what it is? Well, I think um, from the history of it, when they heard about people living with AIDS or having AIDS, it was like at the time it was a death sentence. So that means like this person has came to like the ending days of their life, they have AIDS, like they're gonna go, they're gonna die. So like, um, also too, like when people started caring really much about HIV when that first ad came out, showcasing what AIDS could do to you when that poor man passed away, his his family was around him and mm-hmm. they published that picture in a magazine that's when people really started like, okay, we got to take this seriously. But then it also gave this tone of like, you're going to die from this. Like, right. Right. And, and there was always that label of AIDS. not mm-hmm. that, Right. Right. And also, and, to, and, and since we want to bring up history, right, you did a very good job with that. I also, you know, like in the 19, in 1981, mm-hmm. you know, we found AIDS before we found out what HIV was. Mm-hmm. Something that has to do with it as well. So, so we discovered what AIDS was because of the person you know, in their stages, in their stage, in their stages, in their stages in their HIV journey at that particular moment, we didn't find out what HIV was until 1983, which was two years later. So I think it had a lot to do with it as well. Um, not understanding the difference, um, and not understanding the, you know, how one can lead to the other, and and then the other can can be retracted at any time if the person is continuing to doing what they have to do. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, that was really good. Um, next, I want to talk about different ways of contracting HIV and then how to treat a person who is living with HIV. So, um, Johnny, I wanted you to give me one way of how a person can contract the HIV virus. Um, so I guess I'm gonna go with the, <laughs> um, 
the the um okay fine whatever uh, <laughs> are, you looking, are you looking for fluids or are you looking for like mode of transmission good, good, good. what's your like which one would you prefer us to answer bryce mm, i would say modes of transaction we're gonna get to fluids okay got it okay mm -hmm. so definitely sex um mm. two people that <laughs> are you know engaging in sexual activity and one of them is just happen to be positive may not even know their status um can possibly you know um transmit hiv to someone else um during sexual intercourse mm -hmm. jesse the other big one is iv drug use and sharing mm -hmm. Okay. So blood. Then, yeah. Go ahead. I was just saying, so blood to blood, which is, yeah. Yeah. And I was going to say um, mother to child transmission, which actually can be stopped, but it's still a possibility if a positive mother is carrying a child, she can birth a positive, a positive baby. But I also want to ask the audience, um, can you get HIV from saliva? True or false? I want to hear the response. How many folks do we have watching? I can't so, see them. Just on Facebook, hold on, I can I can't <clears throat> see them as well. Also, hi Autumn. I don't think we said hi. Hey Autumn. <clears throat> Bryce, that's a good that's a good question. I'm curious how people answer. Hey, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting on people to participate. As of right now, I see eight people that are watching live. <laughs> Let me see. Somebody said fourth. We're waiting. Um, I'm not able to see the Twitters and the YouTube um, viewers, but I know you're there and participate. It's okay. This is a learning moment. We don't have to worry about getting anything right or wrong. It's a no judgment zone. Um, well, I'm definitely going to have to agree with Mr. Sean London. It is false. You cannot contract HIV from saliva. Good job, Sean. And also Regina. Regina, the job Regina is for us. But um, I also want to talk about what happens if I'm a positive person and me and you are sharing a drink. Will you become positive from a share, sipping out the same cup? Who are you asking? You, um, Jesse. Um, no, just like saliva. <clears throat> um, no, you can't transmit HIV through sharing a drink with someone. <laughs> Maybe, <Yeah>. rarely, in <laughs> cases, if there's, you know, other fluids involved. But no, the answer is no. Johnny, if I was a positive person, can I give you HIV from a hug? No, um, we can hug. As a matter of fact, we can even grind penises together. Um, <laughs> just to kind of give you a, like, like how, how close mm -hmm. and proximity a person can be to a person, we can be naked and giving each other hugs. Um, and unless there is a blood to blood um, mm -hmm. interaction, or you know, I have a, a a cut on my penis, and you got one on yours, and we just rub them blood crazy. <laughs> rub them <laughs> together, then there is no way that uh, we would be passing HIV to each other. Yes, and I want to get deeper okay. into how to treat somebody who is positive. Who, one, um, how would how would you feel? Or how would you react if somebody disclosed their status to you? Is there a right way or a wrong way to go about it? And I want to ask Jonathan that first. So, disclosure has always been a a very difficult topic to kind of talk about mm -hmm. uh, because people are always in different stages in their journey. And that stage do not have a rule book. They don't have a book. It, you know, it, there is no 
right path to go. Sometimes people skip think skip the process. Sometimes people people go back and I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but they go mm-hmm. back and reverse. Um, so it's there's no really rule book to it. So as it relates to disclosure, um, <clears throat> I'm going to give you an example <laughs> of, 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 of something that that happened. Okay. So um, I had a friend that um, was positive throughout school, mm-hmm. and they so they just happened to do their senior exit project on on them being positive. And when they did their senior exit project, you know, that was like, you know, their, you know, that, that, was, that was it for them pretty much. So they were very comfortable with their status and things like that. So they grew up and now they're like 18, 19 years old, they're meeting people, people are not, you know, now they're out of high school. So people don't really know their status because they're out of that bubble of high school kind of life. Mm-hmm. Um, now they're out in the world. So anyway, make a long story short, um, people don't know that he's positive anymore because he's outside of that that school zone he's not he's like living in the world living life anyway um <laughs> so he's having sex with people not telling people that it, he's positive and there's one person that he wanted to kind of get um serious with um they've already had sexual intercourse mm-hmm. right um and it was un- under it was, it was um, unprotected um the guy the the part the the the, the 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 positive partner um is undetectable so that was never a worry about him transmitting hiv um however because he wanted to progress this relationship with this person he know he needed to kind of tell him or he felt like he kind of tell him i gonna say he needed he know he, he felt like he kind of he wanted to tell him yes. and so what he did was he actually got his senior exit project <laughs> actually out of his closet <laughs> Gave it to his, gave it to his, gave it to the the guy he was interested in, and told him mm-hmm. to go home and read it. Uh, and he read it. The guy read it, and he came back and was like, "Thank you for telling me. Like I appreciate it, and I I, I like you even more now. Um, just was a good read and things like that and whatever. So they, you know, end up being together and whatever. So there are so many different stories that I can kind of think about. Um, mm-hmm. of people, you know, and 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 how they disclose. Um, people kind of get really, um intricate with it, um, use their imagination, things like that. And just, you know, uh, but I think the most important thing about disclosure is people tell you that you are forced and you will feel obligated. And this is my opinion and my opinion only, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like that when we putting the pressure on the person that is positive to disclose, we're putting a lot of pressure on the HIV um, partner. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, as a as opposed to the conversation mm-hmm. naturally coming up or the you know, or the negative partner or perceived to be negative partner or your sexual I'm gonna say sexual partner is a better mm-hmm. word actually. Your your sexual partner as opposed to asking those questions. Um I'm I now, if I'm the positive per per partner, have to bring it up out of nowhere in a random moment, you know, mm-hmm. to let you know that I'm positive. As opposed to, you know, we kind of lighten the pressure off the negative or the other sexual partner that may not be positive to say, you know, to ask those questions or to be prompt about a or to be prompt about asking those questions when they're, you know, interested in somebody or want to have sex with somebody. Um, mm-hmm. I think that we have to kind of help um, guide that conversation and help make that conversation a lot easier, mm-hmm. you know, for, for both parties, not just the person that's positive, but for the person that's negative to even want to ask that question. You know, I think that that's one of the things I have to say about disclosure and how it's it's so it's very much it's very much unbalanced to me and it's too much mm-hmm. pressure on the positive person to mm-hmm. have to disclose information every mm-hmm. time. i'm done as i talk a lot y'all know how <laughs> <laughs> that was really interesting though johnny yeah um, I, I would love to use this as a little shameless plug that we one of the studies we talked about earlier when i introduced um is called tough talks and it is all about disclosure yes. in a safe space, um, all through virtual reality to computers. So mm-hmm. a really cool study to screen for and hopefully enroll in if you are between 16 and 29 years old and living with HIV and would like to earn some money practicing disclosure. Um, because I think like Johnny said, like, <clears throat> In life, you never know how someone will react to anything. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can relate to that in 
the sense that I'm queer and I had to come out, you know, as gay. Um, not that the two are the same, but mm -hmm. I just think the, the general nature of telling people things, you never know how they're going to react. So as long as you are looking after yourself and in choosing who you disclose to, then that's all that matters is that you're taken care of. Right. Period. Right. I would and that definitely... brings us to our next question, and I'm I'm, I'm I don't mean to cut you off, right? <laughs> if you can, can you tell if someone is HIV positive by looking at them? Can you can you tell if someone has HIV by looking at that down? As to how the question is posed, can you tell if someone has HIV by looking at them? I need you guys to answer in the comments, true or false. Where you at? Let us know. Go ahead, Bryce. I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say. Um... If a person discloses that to me, I definitely would thank them for disclosing that to me. And I also feel like it's for me to keep and not to tell. I feel like if someone was to disclose something that's serious to you, that uh, you could probably do uh, the due diligence by keeping it between you two. Mm -hmm. Because um, there could be a time when you disclose your status to somebody and then um, it doesn't go through, but then you date and they friend. And then you like might be talking to their friend and dating their friend. They're like, oh, you know that person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, but it was HIV or herpes, mm -hmm. and then they'd be like, and then they come confront you about it. You like, and then you kind of know who it was because you know how many people you did or didn't tell. So right, and that's frustrating too because like word spreads fast, and if word spreads, then you don't have the the, the power anymore to mm -hmm. disclose your status to who you want to. So right, and then it a random person is walking up to you and be like, "You got AIDS?" You be like, "Huh?" Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh -uh. We got some answers here. I Let's see. see. So we got a force. Mm -hmm. We got another force. You see how I automatically, um, I somehow, some way get a New, a New York accent out of nowhere. It's cool. random. It just comes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But the answer is false. Um, mm -hmm. You cannot tell if someone has HIV by looking at them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So recently, we did recently um, discuss that you can't contract HIV from engaging in unprotected sex with somebody, but we didn't dissect um, whether if you can contract HIV from anal sex, vaginal sex, or oral sex. So I want to yeah. ask. Um, Hey Patrice. hey, Patrice. Hey, Patrice. I want to ask is, could you contract HIV from engaging in oral sex? Johnny? Um, mm -hmm. so, it is a, <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say no, but, uh -huh. there, but there it is a slight chance that you could, but it's so slight that it's almost damn near unheard of. Mm -hmm. Um, but like our saliva, um, let's kind of get into the science behind it a little bit. Our saliva uh has like, Jesse, you can help me with the, with the wording. Has um, <laughs> these like enzymes and all types of antibacterial, like antibacteria and things like that in our in our yeah. saliva that kind of shield our mouth from different things. Mm -hmm. Um. And so your spit. So um, even if you do have, you know, open wounds and things like that in your mouth, mm -hmm. um, your your it's still kind of protected by the saliva that that's just naturally in your mouth, mm -hmm. um, things like that. So can not, I add to that, Johnny? You definitely can, please. Y'all have heard swallow don't spit, right? <laughs> yes. So if so, you swallow, is you gonna get it? Oh my god! Right. So actually, <clears throat> the guidelines say that swallowing is uh, lower risk. Um, than spitting because if you spit, so if someone comes in your mouth and you spit, that gives two-way action to any open sores. Right. Um, so when, like Johnny was saying, the uh, enzymes in the saliva can break it down. So if you've got it in you, if it's coming in, go for it. <laughs> now I also want to discuss HIV contraction from anal sex. And Jesse, can you contract HIV from unprotected anal sex? Yes. Yes. And you can contract HIV as the bottom and as the top. 
from unprotected mm -hmm. female sex. Yes, that is very much true. That is so. The, I want to actually bust that bubble mm -hmm. out there that think that you can go up into these bottoms all raw and think that y'all gonna be safe. That is not the case. Correct. Don't be scared, no. Mm. <laughs> yes, you can contract HIV from vaginal sex. Um, Somebody asked that question. Okay. You can uh, so, mm -hmm. another, another true or false, another true or false, another true or false. Um, this is for the audience. Audience, I'm ready for you to um, participate. Um, and the next question is. I heard straight people can't get HIV. What? I, it's, that's what I heard. It's, it's, that's what I've been told. In you the heard what? Community, that straight people cannot get HIV. <sighs> <laughs> oh, Lord. That's what I heard. That's what they say on the street. Y'all let me know, audience, is that true What's or false? What's the saying? A de the devil is a lie. <laughs> 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 so before we go into that before we go into that question we're going to talk about what Bryce was actually moving on to next mm -hmm. um, i'm gonna let y'all have to I'm gonna, I'm gonna give y'all time to answer in the audience again if you're on twitter and if you're on youtube you can still place a comment and it still shows up and we'll still be able to see it just want to give that reminder out to people that are watching on, on different platforms come on Ted. I, I next i want to talk about living with hiv and how to live a healthier life and i want to get into being undetectable and what does that mean so to be undetectable means to be virally suppressed that means that when you got your, um the hiv doesn't mean about you got it down to a point to where you it's hard for, it won't be possible for you to transmit to another pe another person and usually people are considered undetectable when they have uh 20 to 50 less antibodies um, of HIV living in their body. And that is achieved by being adherent to your medications. So um, I also want to talk about what it means to be undetectable. And is there a certain hierarchy in the community, in the HIV community, where people would say that they are undetectable to soften the blow when they really know that they're not and they're still, they're still trying to achieve it? So, Ghani, I want to ask you that. Do you feel like that's a thing? Um, in the HIV community? Um, well, most definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, but before I go there, I did want to um, um, expunge on your on, on your um, on your facts um, about um, the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. um, so people um, don't really know what the viral load is as of yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so what the viral load is, is um, so when we talk about undetectable, we're talking about how much of the virus is actually in your system. Yes. And it's in your bloodstream. So um, what undetectable means is that the virus is so low in your bloodstream that it is undetectable by medical science. That does not mean that your cure, that your cure, <laughs> I'm, that I'm, country and I'm from the South. Um, that just means that um, HIV <laughs> is in. So the um, just a little fact check, you know, I, I like to do my little um, my little <clears throat> or whatever. So I'm a, I'm a still like a stick man, right? Um, we have glands up under our arms. We have glands in our neck. We have glands in our growing area. I, I know y'all can't see it, and I look right there, right there. Um, and our spine. So what happens is that. Um, HIV can hide out inside of those sections, right? So that's why we can never eradicate HIV inside the body because there are places that we could not get to, the uh, medicines that people take cannot get to to kind of get into those sockets. Neck, the throat, lymph nodes. Neck, your lymph nodes, neck, mm -hmm. underarms, growing in your spine. Um, and so what happens is that, um, so uh, medical science can not detect HIV in your body um, or it's so low as, as undetectable in your body, um, doesn't mean that it's not, it's, it's so, you have a lot of things inside of those areas, um, what virus in, inside of those areas. Um, but because they're in those sockets, um, you cannot transmit it because it's hanging out there, right? Um, so that's what that looks like. And as, and as it relates to the um, people using that word undetectable, 
yes. Um, I do think that that it is has it has become a clutch for a lot for a lot of people. Um, and I for me, it's a bittersweet type such of thing, such thing. Um, because I feel like um it does lessen the blow and is a lot easier to have a conversation for a person that is positive. Um I think that it is very important for if you are interested in a person that tells you that that they're undetectable to do your age a to do your research or b still protect yourself that does not give you the pass to say oh, okay it's undetectable i'm going to go ahead and sleep with this person I, you know sleep with this person i protect it um that is at that point you are now making your own decision to 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 take that risk for, your, for yourself and things like that um and i say that to say i'm taking the pressure off the positive partner because a lot of pressure is always put on the positive partner um and it's not and, it, and i and i think it's not fair so even if the person is using the undetectable phrase or word as a clutch you know to have unprotected sex with you you as a negative partner or a person of interest still has the responsibility of doing your research protecting yourself because you also going off somebody's word Right. Mm -hmm. And getting on prep, call the trees. Right. Right. Um, so I do think that um, I do think that it is a, I do think that people do use it as a clutch, yes. Um, but I'm bittersweet about about it. So it's like sometimes I, I'm okay with it and I and I and I understand why and I get it. Um mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it does kind of, you know, makes me upset when I have a, a, a person to come into the office and felt you know, and they say, Well, the person told me it was un unprotected or they, they was undetectable um and you know i trusted them and this is what happened you know this is kind of what happened i i, I seen both sides of it so i understand it um but i i don't have a, a straight answer in regards to how i feel about it because i i've seen i've seen both sides of it if that makes mm -hmm. sense i'm like you i'm shadowing the fence i'm not sure how i feel about that term i do feel like people can use it as a clutch but there are people who are undetectable that actually who say they are undetectable that actually are undetectable but I still feel like um, if you, as an HIV negative person, was told undisclosed status, I do feel like it's your responsibility to still protect yourself um, any best way that you can. So um, even if that's still deciding not to engage with that person, or just using a condom, or finding out your options about taking prep in um, in that situation. So I want to know if we have any answers to the question: Straight people can't get the head. I mean HIV. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Not the hell. <laughs> we have a false and we have a false. Mm -hmm. And that is correct. Right. I uh, want to dissect that because I feel like it feeds into this narrative that HIV is only transmitted through sex and specifically with sex through straight men. Right. Um, it's also completely skipping <clears throat> the fact that HIV can be uh, contracted from sharing syringes so people who are iv drug users can't contract hiv that way or even if you're a bodybuilder and you're sharing syringes with somebody in the gym which happens Correct. you can't contract hiv that way too just from sharing a syringe so um yeah straight people can't contract hiv <laughs> okay Good job. Um, good job good job and i also want to mm -hmm. i know i can tell by my screen there's one or two people watching so I need y'all to participate. Come on. <laughs> I know it's supposed to. I'm more than two. Let me tell you And then, you know what? We get views like off, like out the, like, y'all participate. It's okay. We got it. Y'all ain't here. We, I see y'all. It's okay. We here. I love it. Come on. Mm -hmm. I'm Next, wait. I want to get into resources for people who are living with HIV because recently, um, a person on social media who used to cause a whole bunch of ruckus has been um found out that he passed away from an aids related pneumonia and then people were saying oh my god the healthcare system failed him but me working as a case manager i'm like there are resources for people who are living with hiv who can get access to an um, IV specialist who stands for infectious disease specialist who can get access to um antiviral medication so I want to know, um, how do you guys feel when you hear things like if somebody died um, from something AIDS-related that the healthcare system failed them? Patrice, I want to get your thoughts on that. 
Well, it definitely wasn't the healthcare system that failed them. It sounds like they failed themselves. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I know people that have just stopped taking their medicine and died. And they did it on purpose. Um, I also know people that were HIV positive and hid it from everybody around them, whether it be because they're young uh, or because they're pastors or different things um, who have been in that situation. Um, I do not engage in, oh, the health system didn't do them wrong. No, I engage in why didn't you support the person that you so apparently adore so much where were you when they needed you mm-hmm. where were you when they needed information and that push to go do what they needed to do mm-hmm. jesse how you feel i could not disagree more <laughs> honestly i think that there are so many good resources great resources mm-hmm. Look at rain hi hi but we're not everywhere and there's a lot of places there's a lot of isolation and there's a lot of stigma and there's a lot of hate i don't know if y'all watched the debate last night but uh i could cry thinking about this right now. i'm not i was telling back i would cry um but i think that there are so many unseen barriers and i think that yes the healthcare system fucking fails people mm-hmm but I think that there are good resources, but I don't think they're everywhere. And I don't think that they're culturally accessible. Mm. Right. Understood. Um, Johnny, how you feel? I I definitely agree with Jesse. Um, I actually, this program, the EIS program that we're doing was something that, and I may actually start crying as well. Um, I had a, a, a person that I knew that passed a year before we started this curriculum. Um, and I think that what happens is that sometimes people fall through the cracks, like, you know, uh, in, in regard, and I say people fall through the cracks is that, you know, we have case managers out here that, you know, for HIV, for people living with HIV, we, you know, we have clinics that are here, people living with HIV, things like that. But if you take that into ratio with the actual number of people living with HIV here, it is so hard to continue to follow and, and maintain one a person out of a um, out of a time at a time to make sure that they come into the doctor's appointment they're calling them and reminding them of things like that um there are a lot of barriers and things like that and unfortunately there are barriers that we all cannot address um you know separately and things like that so i had a um, very close friend of mine we used to dance together in every single thing um past the a, a past six months before i started at rain um and it bothered me so much because I knew this program would have been perfect for him. Um, and he was one of those people where it was hard for him to make a connection. Um, so he needed that peer support. He needed that person um, that, that was going to you know, be on his ass, um, calling him, talking, make sure he takes medicine every single day and things like that. Sometimes people need they're handheld and it's okay um and i i personally wish that i would have been able to kind of got acclimated to my position here at rain and have reached out and got and gotten him into care um and i think a lot of times um patrice made a good point um a lot of people knew what was going on um and didn't you know reach out or didn't help um, they knew the situation and things like that and encouraged that particular person to kind of move and not be stable and things like that. It wasn't that the person wasn't couldn't get stable. It was it was always I'm running from something. So I'm going to New York. I'm going to Texas. I'm going to California. I'm going to I'm, you know, what I'm saying so there was no really honestly way for him to kind of be stable and get acclimated in a state or a city to kind of get here. Mm-hmm. Um, like that because I'm always looking for that next big thing or something big and things like that. And he wasn't a drug user or anything like that, but you know, he had big dreams that he wanted to do. Um, and his healthcare kind of took that back in. So sometimes people need that reminder that hey, you know, we got to get you back in care and things like that. We got to get you back in things like that. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why EIS is such an important program because it allows people, it lets people know that. Um, or first of all, we got to go out and find that. The out of care population, um, 
and identify the out of care population and find them and then gent gently push them to getting them back into care because you can't force somebody to do anything right, right? um so get so getting them back into care and staying with them and building that relationship and teaching them how to successfully navigate their hiv journey and that's what Patrice was touching on too, is like, yes, and I agree with Patrice, like people should have agency. And when we meet culturally adept spaces, then it works. Um, but not everyone knows how to navigate things and has that healthcare agency. Um, but I do agree with both of you. Mm hmm yes lord so we're gonna talk about it let's get into what is ryan white oh my god yes well Ryan white is funding <laughs> from the washington to the dc and it comes in three ports and basically why white is funding that is distributed out through different states and cities um in order to provide hiv care um to those in those parts of the country who are living with hiv so that funding is there to provide health care as it relates to their HIV. That funding is there to provide them with um, access to um, medication. It's also there to provide them funding to um, anything that will help them get into care, be motivated to be in care, and also to stay in care. So um, every state and every city is different. But I know here in Charlotte, we have Rain, a wonderful organization that's Hello. located right at 601 East Fifth Street. You can't miss it in a big, beautiful building. And we have a team of case managers who are here to help you provide services via it will be through for a prep, which is with Miss Patrice, <laughs> substance abuse, um, which will be with Sean. EIS Early Intervention, which stands for Early Intervention Services with me and Johnny. Um, and also to help you make money, Mr. Jesse, with his resource coordinating. Um, but basically, so there is services um, that can help you, a resource that can help you if you are living with HIV. And specifically, if you live in a big city, there's someone there to help you. Don't play with me. <laughs> Wait, Bryce, and if my, you are in New York or California, you can get all of the things. Okay. Including wanna, plastic surgery. Yeah. Okay. Give it to what me. What you say, Jesse? I said, can we get a like a little Ryan White background? Why is it called Ryan White? Yes. Ryan White is named after a kid in Florida mm -hmm. who contracted HIV AIDS from a blood infusion. Mm -hmm. um, he had really a lot of problems going to the doctor. Hell, he had problems just living once the people in his town found out. Mm -hmm. And that's where that came from. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Those are all, I don't know all of the details. I just kind of know the, the outside summary. Yeah, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. right. right, that is correct. So, yeah, so previously we talked about disclosure and discuss its status, but we also want to make, make you guys know that that is a choice and not a must, but also here in North Carolina, if I remember correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, if you achieve being undetectable for six months or longer, you do not have to disclose your status. But I think that has changed to where you don't even have to disclose your status if you don't want to. No. No, it's still the same? No. So even if you are undetectable, mm -hmm. so the law states that if you are positive, you are supposed to disclose your status. That is the law. Ooh. But so when we talk about under, undetectable and untranslatable, mm -hmm. there are a relaxed. Um, it, so the law and the bill has not changed. Mm -hmm. It has not changed at all. Um, but it's more relaxed because you you have reached the undetectable status. That has not that, that, you don't disclosure has not, that disclosure law has not changed. No. Oh, but it's different um, state to state, right? And it is different states from state to state. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Is it so, still a uh, attempted murder charge? Um, Somebody I'm, told I'm, me it was no longer listed as that. Let's look at uh I'm actually not sure if it's still that with that with that that chart. I know in South Carolina it is. Yes, in South Carolina it, it is. Um, but I'm not exactly sure if it's still that in North Carolina. But I do know that the laws have been relaxed because of the yeah untrans untrans untransmittable um science caught up. 
Okay, so several states criminalize one or more behaviors that pose a low or ne um, negligible risk for HIV transmission. In 21 states, law requires people with HIV who are aware of their status to disclose their status to sex partners. 12 states require the closure to needle sharing partners. Mm. So there's less for needle sharing. Yes. Yep. For sex. Yep. Yep. Mm. Okay. That's actually not surprising. So North Carolina is marked as a criminalized or controlled behaviors through HIV specific states and regulations. Yes. Yes. So, mm -hmm. and to and to bring it into layman's terms, it's just letting you know that if you can, be, you still can be prosecuted for not disclosing your status. Um, however, again, I want to. Uh, um, um, make sure I put emphasis on the fact that if you are undetectable and can prove under your undetectable status for six months or more, it is a more relaxed law um, or things like that. Not saying that you still cannot be criminalized, not saying that that's something that, that, that just goes away because it doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. It's just more relaxed and it's harder to prosecute. Mm -hmm. Lord. Um, so, to make it light, <laughs> to make it light because that, was, that was heavy. Um, if I say prep, I do not need to. I do not need to use a condom. Lies. False. True false. Lies and deceit. Patrice, be quiet. It's for the audience. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just got triggered. I am so sorry. <laughs> it's if I take no girl. If I take prep, I do not need to. I do not need to use. Ooh. Let me want to hear from the audience. Can, can we? Can we get? Can we? Can we, can, we, can we get the viewers to answer that question for us, please? This one's tricky too because there are, <laughs> because there are many schools of thought when it comes yeah. to this yeah. many layers. There's many layers to this, actually. Please peel back those layers for me because I'm curious. One, are you actually actively adherent to uh -uh. your friend? Jesse, don't pay attention. <laughs> don't. Pay attention. <laughs> That's the first layer. Trying to reel you in. Come on over. Come on in. <laughs> Oh shit! Uh, I'm gonna say for the I'm gonna say true. You got some uh, <laughs> answers over here. I'm gonna say Wait a minute! What do you think it is? Patrice, Patrice, don't engage, don't engage. Ah. Leave it alone. Let it go. I'm sorry. Let it go. Okay. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I wasn't either. I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so can we this, talk about the layers now? Yes. Okay, give it yeah. to me. So the first layer is one. Um, prep protects you from not contracting HIV, but it still does not protect you from not contracting any other STIs. Correct. Two, are you even adherent to your prep like you're supposed to? Prep is something that you have to take every single day. Now, oh, I'm about to make a quick trip. Let me go ahead and pop a pill. And pop a pill. Not yet, at least. Takes two weeks before it can come active in your system. Mm -hmm. Once you have missed, mm, never mind. We ain't going that far. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it 21 days for vaginal tissue? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and that is still with Truvada. The SCOVI information will not be released until the end of the year. Mm hmm. So it's, With it's, females. it's seven days for anal tissue, rectal tissue? No, it's it's 14 days. It takes two weeks. And it's not even the tissue. It is into your cells. So what happens is it builds a shield around your cells mm -hmm. so that whenever you're in contact, it just kind of bounces off. However, uh, the way that the HIV may be entering into the bloodstream, where if it's through vaginal walls or anal walls, it's kind of the actual difference. Hey, Bryce, where'd Bryce go? Is you in the bathroom? I want to know no. what Bryce's third layer is. No. I, you know, I'm waiting for the onion. Still yeah. don't open. Open it. Let's go, Bryce. What's the third one? <laughs> 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 
Oh, the third one is you should still be protecting yourself anyway. Just because Can I get an family, amen? Just because a you get on birth control doesn't mean the fucking yeah. Amen. So just because you get on PAP still doesn't mean you shouldn't still not use condoms, you know? Um, Y'all too risky for me. That's okay, because I'm risky <laughs> as well. And we're not gonna do that to the, you know to my people that, that don't like to use condoms. Right. I'm, here for, I, I'm here for you guys and I understand and I and I am your advocate. I totally get it. It's also I, this I, cool thought that like it's safer sex, right? So if you're it's a, not but if you're adherent to your prep and you're it's still not but it's safer than not using prep and not using condoms. Right. Yeah, using so, both is safer. Safer sex, prep is a step <sighs> toward safer sex. That's correct. But I also want to get into what if me and my partner were both positive? Do we both need to be in here to our medicine or do we still need to wear condoms? Good question. So before that we, is a good question. So before we answer that on here, mm -hmm. I want to try to get the audience engaged to see. Um, can you answer that question? Ask that question one more time again, Bryce, so, so so the people in the back can hear you. Okay. If my partner if my partner and I are both living with HIV, do we still need to use condoms? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a Jeopardy fan. I mean, we both got it, like... <laughs> it don't, like... So it's like, it really don't matter, like... It's a trick question. It's like, it's like... It is a trick question. You know, because... We got the same thing. Like, what's up? Like, y'all taking too long to answer the question. <laughs> answer the question. Do y'all know? I'm, there's no right or wrong answer. There is a wrong answer, but we don't judge. We don't We're judge. Not gonna, oh. This is a teaching moment. We, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a teaching moment. Okay. Well, they, they're not going to answer. They're, they're too nervous. They don't want to give us the wrong answer. They want to give us the wrong answer. So, this is what. Oh, oh, somebody put four. But there's multiple layers to this too. Are both of you undetectable? Do you guys take the same medication for your HIV treatment? Are there any play buddies? Oh uh, yeah. Come and on. Also, do you have the same strain? Exactly. Do you have the same strain of HIV too? Because your strain can make me resistant to my medication, and I have to start all over again. Correct. Yeah. I don't like to eat. <laughs> then there is no such thing as a super HIV strain. Please. A super virus. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. I actually had to explain that to somebody the other day because it was like. I ran an article that Atlanta got their own strain. They got a super strain. And I was like, well, there's no super strain. It's got a cape on it and everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, and I think that this mm -hmm. came from some, I've heard that um, somebody was, you know, copped this story up that two people who were positive came together and created a super, a super strain, a super strain because they were having sex with each other. Um, but that is not true. It's not. Um, I they both all three of them kind of explains it uh, uh, um very well um, mm -hmm. as it relates to resistances. Now there's a so there is something that can happen to you. Um, in the event your partner is resistant to something, um, that you're taking, um, uh, that can cause you to be resistant to your now medicine. Um, there 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 even is a um um. Uh, process to where this your part, sexual partner that you may not know how much information about can be resistant to all the medication. Um, yeah, that's true. And you have contracted their resistances, all of their resistances. So now that a lot of medications don't work for you as well. Um, so those are the different things that we talk about as, as related to resistance. Um, so that's it's no such thing as a super virus, though. Well said, Johnny. Yeah, but All right. right. So, I want to thank you guys for participating tonight. We just went through a couple of them. Um, 
if my viral load is undetectable, I cannot um, spread HIV through sex. That is what true or false, you guys? No, it's for y'all. It's for the oh, people. It's oh, true. 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 <laughs> that is correct. You are undetectable. We talked about that earlier today with the glands. And the oh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, baby. <laughs> I cannot. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> no. No. Never. So Never. you mean to tell me that, that case, you can get a virus from a mosquito, but not HIV. So you mean to tell me if a mosquito come and bite me, and I'm positive, and then come and bite Patrice? And the mosquito is actually carrying my blood in their body. That, but you ain't gonna get it. The difference between that's mosquito, not how this works. The difference between the mosquito and the syringe is that whatever is in the mosquito will never go back out. It stays in the mosquito. When you're using a syringe, you have to push out what's already in. That's the difference. Well, you have to pull in a little bit before you push out. Yeah, it's a uh-huh. whole. Thing. Shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. So that's the difference. What if I just want to put the tip in? Oh, that's that's the setup. It never ends up being just the tip. Don't do it. Yeah, I learned that the hard way freshman year. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm nervous. He said, just the tip. I said, okay. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Mhm. Uh oh. So, um, I want to thank you guys for, like I said, for joining us tonight. We are going to actually close it up, close up shop. If you guys have any questions or any myths that you kind of think that you think want to know if it's true or not, or anything that you, anything you want to ask, you can feel free to ask us now, or you can inbox um somebody. Um, if you're watching on the Keeping It 100 page, you can just inbox Keeping It 100. Um, I do want to. Give a light push if you're watching from our personal pages to please, please, please go love, like, and share our Keeping It 100 page um, so that you can start watching on that. Um, I want you guys to kind of still have access to that um, and look up any things that we may post. We, we posted some really nice, neat stuff on there. Um, we got some nice, pretty gra- graphics on there. Um, things like There's that. no nudity. Don't get excited. Also, I just saw a misspelling on the graphics I sent out. <laughs> so, it's okay. Look it's all right. They know what they did. They know oh, if you now that you know, just like go look and you'll see it. Okay. <laughs> it's part of our quirky, you know, nature. Yes. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, I'm, I'm actually interested. I want to know now. I gotta, I'm ready to go look now. <laughs> No. I ha- why have I- Let's say good night first. Okay. Okay. So thank you guys for participating. Um, again, if you need services, you're looking to sign up for prep. Um, please contact Patrice. Um, we're trying to get that in and out. I know the summer, the winter months, the winter months are coming through. I know it's you know y'all gonna be booed up. You know it's cuddle season. It's, it's fat girl fall. Come on now. <laughs> yes, it is. Come come through. <laughs> Come through. Come through. <laughs> it's getting cold so, outside. Yes, Hello. So now is a good time for you guys to kind of, you know, if you are really interested in the one and wanna and wanna be on prep, please contact her. Um and also if you are positive and you're looking for a home to help you navigate your HIV journey, um, you can contact myself, Bryce. Um, and if you are positive and you are looking for a research study to be a part of please contact jesse also the neg- negative get that some money this project so contact jesse so and you can make some money throughout the, get that's the money so, like real money like money money like three four hundred dollars money yes. yeah and it's not hard it's so easy, so easy. Fast tune, tune in next week we have a very interesting topic that we're going to be talking about and that is you see the title. Oh, it's about me, the fat hat. Yes, <laughs> best friends. 
That'll be fun. Oh, yes, I see it. You see the typo? Join yeah. the conversation. Yes, I see it. <laughs> I see he it. really went and looked at that right now. No, 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 I didn't. I was just showing the 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 the, the flyer. He pointed oh, it out. Oh, yeah. Everybody, everybody, everybody. <laughs> Completely my bad. Oh. <laughs> So tune in next oh, wow. week. We, we, we'll be waiting on you. Um, and always, and remember, don't forget that. Oh, Jesus. Getting tested is sexy. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>